Team keep it clean, y'all don't miss nothing. Don't get mad, uh -huh. it's just what it is. What it is. Yeah, we talking sports, shout out to Grave and Vince. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So you too, Team Keep It Clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, boy, Sammy Watkins, he had a lot to say. During the live stream, he had a lot to say, but then after the live stream cut out, the interview didn't stop, and he had even more to say. Before we get into this, I gotta give a shout out to MySecretDwelling.com. Y'all know that's my aunt. She makes the customized, reversible face mask for you. So y'all make sure y'all hit up at MySecretDwelling.com. Her website is down below in the description. And real quick, shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. I love y'all. Thank you all for just, let's see, the, the, the list is still going. Uh, I, I really appreciate y'all for showing extra support and just Team Keep It Clean as a whole. Thank you for when we are on other people's channels that y'all show lots of love and positivity because that's what it's about at the end of the day. Love and positivity, and that goes way deeper than any football game, any football player, any of that stuff, man. It's about showing love, man. So I love y'all for that and keep that up. So, Sammy Watkins, oh boy. It's... <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Sammy Watkins was going in yesterday. Now, of course, we covered everything that he talked about during the live stream, but after that live stream went off, oh, there was something that he said that really ruffled a couple of feathers. And some people appreciate it. They were like, hey, that's Sammy Watkins being honest. And you know, we appreciate honesty. We love honesty. Honesty is the best policy. But sometimes when you're honest, it can hurt some feelings. Uh, sometimes when you're honest, it can ruffle some feathers. Uh, but sometimes when you're honest, it can make it seem like you're trying to create your own path. But let's see what Sammy Watkins had to say. He said that uh, he believes that Lamar Jackson can become an elite quarterback in the NFL if the Ravens wide receivers get better separation. But let's look at the exact quote. It takes guys getting open to be great and look great and be the Patrick Mahomes of the world and be Tom Brady. You got to have that number one receiver or that number two or that number three nowadays to go out there and be successful and literally throw the ball with your eyes closed and be unconscious. If I can go out there and be healthy and the other wideouts can make plays, we can be a balanced offense. If we get open when we need to get open, I think Lamar can throw for those 4,000 yards or those 4,500 yards or 5,000 yards, whatever these guys are putting up. I think he can be that quarterback and be elite in this game. So Sammy Watkins let it be known like, hey, I, <laughs> the guys got to get open. Guys have got to get open in order to help out your quarterback. And we as Ravens fans, we know that more than anything. And I know a lot of people have said they went back and they watched games. And they were like, man, there were so many times when guys just, they were not getting open. But let's see what else Sammy Watkins had to say about that. He said, to be honest, everybody wasn't getting open. I think that's a critical part with this offense. We can blame the offensive coordinators. But as players, we got to do our job. <laughs> Sammy Watkins lighting a fire Lighting a fire Under the Ravens Wide receivers Behinds He's coming in here Letting it be known Like hey We got to step up Now Depending on what side of the spectrum You look at this from You could say hey He's coming in As a veteran as a leader, and he's letting it be known, like, hey, we got to step this thing up right away. Or you could be like, hey, he's coming in as a veteran, as a leader, and saying, hey, it's not the offensive coordinator that's the problem. Even though this guy, that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy, that, all these guys have said that. It's not the offensive coordinator that's the problem. It's you guys. It's you guys. And sometimes, hey, you got to have these uncomfortable conversations with people in order to really challenge them, in order to really get the best out of them. Because if you just skate by like everything's cool, like, oh, yeah, oh, no, you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. Even though this person could be terrible at whatever it is that they're doing. That's not going to fly and that's not going to help them get better. It's not. So sometimes we got to challenge each other to really step it up. But could Sammy Watkins be alienating himself from the team? A little bit. 
Well, let's take a look at what some of Team Keep It Clean had to say about Mr. Watkins. First, my guy Nitrate, he brought out some points. He said, Sammy Watkins is setting himself up to be the teacher's pet. His fellow wide receivers can't do anything but get mad. He's buttering up the only ones that matter, the offensive coordinator that may write him into a more prominent role, and Lamar, who may throw to him. Mind you, Sammy Watkins had his own problems getting open. Uh, when you walk into the door praising the least pass-friendly offensive coordinator, knowing his record, you know he's playing the politics. And ooh boy, politics are certainly being played. Yes, they are. Because like he said, he, he really covered it right then and there. Because he's giving high praise to the ones that matter the most and the ones that are really going to help him and keep him involved in the game plan. That's Greg Roman, who he, again, he's already worked with him. And that's Lamar Jackson too. And then of course, there's Keith Williams as well. So Sammy Watkins' familiarity with these guys, it definitely helps him, but him saying all the right things in that press conference and, and, and him really just defending Greg, like really putting it out there for Greg Roman, that said a lot. And that goes directly against not just what a lot of us fans are saying, because I know a lot of people come on here and they're like, oh, you guys are just armchair GMs. You don't know what you're talking about. But then when you hear it from actual players who play in this NFL, who play in this system, and who have played in other systems too, when you hear it from them, it hits different. And the consistency of it too, it hits different. And these aren't just guys, like think about the guys who are saying this stuff. These are guys who are some of the, the leading receivers on the team. Hollywood, of course, uh, Willie Sneed, of course, and Dez Bryant, who has, and Willie Sneed does too, but Dez Bryant and Willie Sneed, they have that outside experience, experience outside the Ravens system, experience outside this current Ravens offense, and they have been guys that have gotten a significant uh, amount more of catches um, in their careers prior to coming with the Baltimore Ravens, so they know what it's like on the outside. But you notice the guys who haven't really said anything about it is guys that Devin DuVernay, he ain't say nothing. Prochet, he ain't say nothing. Boykin, he ain't say nothing. And those are essentially guys whose spot is really, I mean, it's a lock, but at the same time, they, they can't really speak out like that because their time, their playing time is already very small. So imagine if they said something about, oh, ooh, that would be a big yikes. That would be a huge yikes. So just something to keep in mind. But Sammy Watkins came and he said, no, it's not the offense. It's not the offensive coordinator. It's us. It's us. Now, again, that does create that accountability. Like, hey, we need to do everything that we can possibly do to really get this thing going, really get this thing jumping as wide receivers. But then, and of course, Sammy Watkins, he had his best year ever under Greg Roman. But then you got to think about it again. Greg Roman, again, look at the numbers. And numbers don't tell the whole story, but they tell a big chunk of it. Greg Roman, always top five, rushing, always, always. Always bottom five in passing. And that wasn't just with the Ravens. It wasn't just with the Bills. It wasn't just with the 49ers. So it's just something to keep in mind. And then when you couple that with the Ravens passing offense that really for a while, it hasn't been anything sexy. Not that they necessarily needed to, but they just need the efficiency to step up a bit more. But when you couple that with the, the, the consistency of the rate, what the Ravens offense has been over the years, even before Lamar, it's, it can be sort of a tough match. But hopefully, again, Keith Williams and T. Martin, you don't just bring in two wide receiver coaches for no reason. You don't do that. <laughs> that's, just, that's not something that you just thought of out the blue. No. That was a very strategic move by John Harbaugh and Eric DeCosta. And again... They, did, they weren't like, hey, Greg Roman, we're going to bring... No, they went over Greg Roman. They didn't bring Greg Roman in on an interview. No, they went over Greg Roman and brought those guys in. 
And again, Greg Roman, what he does good, he does great. Phenomenal job. But what needs some work, it needs some work. And speaking of the wide receivers, we got a question from one of the patrons, my guy Nick Brick. He said, Engraven, I got two questions after watching that Sammy Watkins press conference. I'm a certified Boykin hater. Shaking my head. You shouldn't be. You need to change your tune on that right now, buddy. But he said, uh, I may be starting to see the light. When Sammy said Keith Williams can get anyone open, that made me excited about Miles Boykin. I started to think about how amazing Boykin would be if he actually knew how to run routes, use his size, and get open. I would just love to hear your thoughts on that. And uh, yes, I am looking forward to seeing what these wide receiver coaches do, with, really with everybody, to just expand on what they do well already and improve on what they don't do so well. So I'm just, and I know a lot of us, we want to get that outside wide receiver. We want to get this guy, that guy in the third, but we also want to see these guys that we have already really be pushed to the limit and be pushed to the, their maximum potential. So I agree with you on that. And his other question was, he said, I never agree with what Skip Bayless has to say, but he described the Baltimore wide receiver position as the best opportunity for a receiver to show they can be that guy at wide receiver. After hearing Sammy Watkins talk, it sounds like he saw it that way too. Choosing Baltimore is risky because it has killed almost every receiver's career upon arrival. As a receiver from the outside, I would have never chose the Ravens because of history alone. We usually look at this as what this receiver can do for the Ravens, but I'm wondering what you think the Ravens could do for Sammy Watkins. Do you think that he has any chance to come here, turn his passing attack around, along with the other guys, and really get back that respect that he had when he was saucing up Darrell Reeves twice a year? He said that he needed a change of scenery, and I think he was hinting at the fact that he's ready to go back to being one of the main pieces on offense. I really like this press conference, and it signaled to me that, uh, just like many other players on the team, he's been doubted and is ready to, as you said, prove them wrong. Oh, I like that. I like that. But I think you answered your own question where you said he said he needed a change of scenery. And I think he was hinting at the fact that he's ready to go back to being one of the main pieces on offense. In KC, he wasn't the first option. He wasn't the second option. He, and he was more like mm, maybe the third but fourth option. He was, yeah, the third or fourth option, maybe even sometimes the fifth. And that's a beautiful thing when you can say, oh, Sammy Watkins, he was our third, fourth or fifth option. That means you have some high quality depth. You have high quality depth. But at the same time, like you said, maybe he, he didn't want to continue being that. He wanted to get back to being the main guy, the head honcho. And with the Ravens, he, he's not going to have much competition when it comes to that. Right now, Hollywood is our main guy. But Sammy Watkins, again, the politics, hey, you say the right thing. It's like you, you get a new job, and you knew the manager from before, and you're like, hey, okay. Hey, this manager right here, hey, I know a lot of the employees, a lot of y'all don't be happy, but look, no, this is the best manager out there right now. This manager, trust me, no, it's not the manager that has the problems, it's y'all. It's the employees. You guys are not doing a good job at your job. The manager's doing just fine. He's doing just fine. I've worked with him before. I've seen what he can do. He's special. But it's you guys that aren't doing your job. I mean, it, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. So with, with Sammy Watkins, I just, um, whew, he, he's, he's definitely got some stuff to prove. He definitely got some stuff to prove. Uh, my guy Willie, he said Watkins is not the answer. He is an answer. Uh, by his own admission, he is an interchangeable piece in the Williams-Martin-Roman offense. I got raised eyebrows when he said the coaches have to give him time off so they don't kill his legs. Sounds like a possible $5 million vacation. I hope I'm wrong. And with that, he, he was talking about the part. And we covered that in yesterday's video where he said that uh, the, the reporter asked him the question like, hey, what, what are you going to do to stay healthy? Because we all know the injury history and whatnot. And Sammy Watkins said, hey, that's, it, it has a lot to do with coaching. He, th he threw a lot of it on coaching. It was like, hey, like, they, like I've had coaches where they know when to pull me out and they really know how to pace me and whatnot. Um, and I was like, Ooh, okay, well. But then he did bring it back to himself and he said it's about me and it's about me in the weight room and whatnot, getting massages and, and eating right. 
Uh, so I was like, okay, so he threw it back to himself. But, yeah, that, that part was a little bit concerning. So hopefully, again, like I said, hopefully Sammy Watkins just comes in and proves us wrong because that's the biggest thing, man. That is the biggest thing. Some people like Sammy Watkins, some people don't. Uh, but the, the, one of the biggest things about Sammy Watkins that I think everybody, whether you are for or against Sammy Watkins, well, I mean, if you're a Ravens fan, you should definitely be for him because he's on the squad now. But one of the biggest things with Sammy Watkins that I think everybody has a concern about is his injury history. That's the biggest thing, his availability. That's the biggest thing. Biggest question mark moving forward with this Sammy Watkins move. So with Sammy Watkins, again, we hope that he stays healthy. Again, for 17 games and then playoffs and whatnot, um, that's, that's our biggest question mark moving forward. But then he also said that players like Watkins and Clowney should be paying the Ravens because of the Ravens' superior conditioning programs. Lastly, I hope that this is the last we hear of the Ravens' wide receiver stampede. Again, stop obsessing on these wide receivers. Get Vash or Terry and let Martin or Williams coach up Boyle, Antoine Wesley, Vash or Terry, Watkins, Hollywood, Duvernay, Prochet. If this group lives up to its potential, they could be every bit as good as the Chiefs receivers. Okay, Tyreek Hill is still hard to match. Ravens got everything they need. They just need to use it. Mm. Well, that was well said. That was well said. And y'all had some very interesting comments to share uh, in yesterday's video. My guy Thomas, he said, are people raising their hopes for Sammy Watkins now? Or are we still being realistic? Because Ravens fans hype up their wide receiver in the offseason. But when the season hits... No one can get separation. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. We're going to see. We're going to see about that separation this year. Again, that's why you're bringing those wide receiver coaches. Oh, my guy, Dre, he said he only came because he got rejected by the Colts. Oof. Certainly a big yikes with that one. My, my, my. Now, Pathfinder, he said, I bet you $20 he's going to change that energy when he's on the field. And what he was referring to was uh, when Sammy Watkins was saying, I I'm not worried about the targets. I'm not worried about the targets. I'm not worried about the lack of reception. I'm not worried about the yards. I'm not worried about the stats. He said he wasn't worried about the numbers, that he just wanted to do everything that he possibly could to help these Ravens win. And, and, and that, hey, that, that's a great answer. That's a very great answer. And this goes into our guys, uh, Tamaris, his comment. He said, while there's some honesty in his answers, most are very PR in nature. So there's public relations. Sammy was just saying the right thing. He said what he needed to say. And he said uh, the true reason he picked the Ravens was they are probably a better overall team based on the teams that he met with, uh, probably had the best offer. He wants to play ball and knows that he won't be a star. So why not go to a team that is not top 10 in passing so no one can say you fell off? Ooh. So my guy Tamaris was saying that this could be a strategic move by Sammy Watkins. Now, somebody did say hey, he only came because he got rejected by the Colts. Uh, but again, like we said, the Colts, we knew the Colts were just using him. We knew the Colts were just using him so they could put that pressure on T.Y. Hilton. And it worked. It worked. But with this, uh, he... The Ravens probably gave him the best offer. Probably. And he said he wants to play ball. Yeah, but that last part, man. He knows that he won't be a star, so why not go to a team that is not top 10 in passing so no one can say you fell off? That is a very interesting comment, and that comment goes a lot deeper than you think. Because with that comment, the, he's going to a team that's yeah not top 10 in passing, so if his numbers decline, if his numbers aren't all that, if he doesn't get over a certain amount of yards, a certain amount of touchdowns and whatnot, then people could look around and be like, oh, Sammy went to the Ravens? Oh, well, well, the expectations are lower. So, oh, did Sammy Watkins fall off? No, 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 no. The expectations are lower. Oh, did, did Sammy Watkins still got it? Well, no, 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 no. The expectations are lower. So this could sort of alleviate any blame on Sammy Watkins. But at the same time, he did say, like, hey, it's not on the offensive coordinator. It's not on the offense. It's on us as players. They weren't getting open enough. Lamar needs y'all to get open. Get open. You have to get open for LJ, man. You got to do it. Greg Roman is not the problem. It's the receivers. So Sammy Watkins, he certainly got a lot to prove because he, has a, he had a lot to say. So we're rooting for you, Sammy. We're definitely rooting for you now. And we hope that this thing goes nice and smoothly 
and this offense can just really be taken to another level. Team Keep It Clean, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. On that note, we out.